Today I'm going to talk about alcohol. I thought it would be kind of interesting to include some clips of me intoxicated. This chart changed my life. If you're considering quitting alcohol, stay till the end. I'm going to give you some of the tips and tricks that I used when things were difficult. Look at my amazing turmeric latte. I love making turmeric lattes lately or golden milk lattes. It's turmeric, cinnamon, ginger powders with some vanilla, maple syrup, and then I use plant milk, whatever plant milk you like. Mmm. Oh wow, this one is especially good. Yeah, turmeric is so good for you. So is ginger and cinnamon. I mean, and the maple syrup is just such a treat. Hello my beautiful friends and welcome back to another video. I am changing the pace a little bit today and we're going to be talking all about alcohol. Alcohol! I get a lot of questions about it across all my social medias. I'm going to give you the what, when, how, where, why. And if you're considering quitting alcohol, stay till the end. I'm going to give you some of the tips and tricks that I used when things were difficult, how I made it through. So I'm officially a year, a month and a half sober. I quit drinking alcohol December 21st, 2020. I was drinking so much alcohol. Uh, Luke and I both were. And it had just become so normalized uh, for us to be drinking every day. And not necessarily getting drunk every day, but you know, having at least one or two drinks every single day with every meal. If we went out for lunch, if we went out for dinner, there was always a cocktail. I love mezcal, lots of tequila, lots of champagne for celebrating. And it just was the lifestyle. There was nothing wrong with it in my mind. You know, we would get drunk and we would fight sometimes. And I just thought that was normal. And I'd get drunk and not remember things. And I just thought that was normal or get drunk and just act really dumb. And I just thought that was normal. You know, everyone else was doing it. This is on society. It's in every TV show and movie we ever watch. Like alcohol is the most normalized drunk after sugar maybe in the entire world. And it is just <laughs> such a trip now that I'm on the outside of it. I think the panini for a lot of us was incredibly traumatizing. And in order to escape from this like wild, media war, fear of death, fear for our families, fear for our elders, loss of freedom. My substance of choice was alcohol and it has been for a long time. I was beginning to understand and have this kind of deeper calling inside of me, especially when I was in Mexico City. I got really intoxicated and left the party by myself in Mexico City. I did not know what neighborhood I was in. My phone was dead. These amazing guys found an iPhone charger for me at the gas station and helped me out. Like, it was very nice of them. It is so interesting for me now to reflect on Kristen of past because I don't know if you guys have ever had times in your life when you've grown and changed so much that you literally don't recognize yourself. I mean, we would have a blast together. We would get along super well, but like she would look at me and be like, what are you thinking? Why are you sober? And I'd be looking at her like, what are you thinking? Why are you drinking all the time? So yeah, I was at my parents' place. It was about to be Christmas. And Christmas for me, December for me, is by far probably my one, one of my most alcohol induced months. Time at home, time with the ho for the holidays. I would typically do Christmas streams. I'd put Baileys in my coffee in the morning and keep adding Baileys and then have red wine at night. And that was just the mode. And I would typically like binge drink with my family and, and have martinis and then red wine with dinner and then maybe some grappa after dinner with my grandma. And this was just the cycle. So coming into the holidays, I was really making an effort to um, just be more self-aware. I think that the panini really taught me a lot about looking inwards. Like it sent everyone to their room to look at themselves in their life. And this was kind of me coming out of partying in Mexico City and then coming home with family. And I was just at, you know, not a low, but I was just at a very open and transformational point in my life. Like I really felt like it was time for me to not make excuses for myself on why I wasn't able to find success, have a healthy body, have a healthy mind, have a safe and loving relationship, etc. And so I was reading my old journals when I was younger and I was reading these 
uh, entries that I put in when I was like 18 or 17 when I went to school. I was writing in my journal about the weekends after I was blacking out and just how I was doing stupid stuff and I was like hooking up with the wrong people and I was just embarrassed with myself and really frustrated that this was just the cycle that I was in. And I was incredibly like judgmental of myself, but the more I learn about addiction and about alcohol is it's not, alcohol is not the problem, right? Like the, the tool is not the problem, but like what problem is the tool solving? And this goes for anything, whether it's like video game indulgence, alcohol indulgence, uh, marijuana indulgence, sugar indulgence, like there's all of these things that we're using to numb the pain or to block it out or to disassociate. And so both my vices were video games and alcohol. I was reading all these journal entries and it was just my younger self was just in a place where she was in a lot of pain and a lot of frustration and a lot of societal pressure. This was before I started streaming full time. I was still in university and I was just like, I was just lost. And so I was using alcohol to numb the heck out of that and to produce a lot of the social anxiety I had being at a new school and not knowing anyone. It just made me more free, more free to participate in the current norms of being a teenager and in your early 20s, which is partying and binge drinking and random hookups and just acting like a free fool, which that's what your 20s are for, right? So after reading these journal entries, I was just like very sad, actually. I felt overwhelmingly sad because I, until that point, was not aware or strong enough to quit for Kristen. I'm the type of person that I can't go down to like one drink a day, you know, it's just, like the one drink just turns into two, which turns into three, which just gets normalized again. Alcohol was one of the ways that when I was really excited and like high on life, like almost a little bit manic, which I learned more after quitting alcohol that I am quite manic and depressive, but I was using alcohol to self-medicate that. When I would get off of stream, and stream is so stimulating, like you've got chat coming in, you're running a bunch of different programs, you're participating in the game, you're playing your best, and you just get into this just super heightened state of awareness. And I, uh, I would use alcohol like during stream or after stream to kind of find my normal point. So there's too much energy in my body. And when I was feeling really depressed and really sad, I would do the same thing. Or when I'm celebrating, I do the same thing. And it's playing out all of these aspects of I did, was not giving my body the tools and the skills it needed to move and cycle the energies and the waves of life, you know, the highs and the lows. Like we use alcohol to celebrate and we use alcohol when we were going through a breakup. That would be kind of interesting to include some clips of me intoxicated. Tequila is so typical of a drink. my stream. I streamed for so long. We had some champagne. We had a party. I need to get changed now because my mom's coming over. I totally forgot that I had a family dinner tonight and uh, I ended up drinking a bottle of champagne and celebrating on my stream the 20 million views. Hey guys, so I'm currently at the party and I'm going to end the vlog here because it's loud. It's noisy in there. It's almost 2 a.m. I had two Moscow mules and I don't really trust myself to be coherent. Like, like towards the end of high school, I was like really like uh, having like an identity crisis, I guess you can say. Like, another one, but the dust. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a that's a no. They had the hood popped, and that is like, that so like, yeah, shout out to Hangover Heaven. I wanted to be strong enough for Kristen to do this for her. Um, so I set a goal that when I earn 20 million dollars, I am going to drink again and I will not go back to binge drinking. This is just gonna include nice glasses of wine when I'm in Italy or a mezcal margarita wine when I'm in a nice vibey place. Like I'm not against alcohol, I just don't need it anymore and I don't desire it anymore. And so a few things happened here, which were really interesting to me actually. And one of them was, I was met with a lot of resistance from the people in my life, including people that I love and who I thought would have the best interest for me. And ultimately I learned that they did over time, but my shift in my character came at such an abrupt character change to them, it felt like, 
that they were caught off guard, which included Luke, my boyfriend, which included my parents, which included my friends. It was Christmas, so everyone was drinking. My dad was pulling out the really nice bottles of wine. My bubby was making martinis, and I was just like, nope, this is hard as heck. Like that first week, <laughs> I think I literally put myself through like the Thunderdome. Like this was like the most alcohol infused week, Bailey's and coffee, that I could have started my detox during and it was like really really hard and the first month was quite difficult because what I realized and this was so interesting to me is that I was using alcohol to self-medicate my emotions all of them like what alcohol did is it brought my high line lower my low line higher and it put me in this little range but as a goal for me in life like I want to experience life to the absolute fullest like I want to experience the most ecstatic bliss states that my body can handle and I want to experience the deepest love like uh, when it's like when you're grieving and you're loving and you just recognize how much you love the person or when you're grieving a loss of self like I, I really had to grieve losing kitty plays or this like character that I am and was for so long too and I was using alcohol to do that but I want to feel it I want to feel it all I want to deeply feel my emotions and I've learned that the only way to process emotions if I don't want them to get stuck in my body I need to be experiencing it all and I need to be deeply acknowledging them and saying hi I'm capable of handling you now and I'm capable of, of sitting with you and, and understanding what the messages that you bring are and not just numbing myself out and, and pressing on uh, so the first week was really difficult. I would just crave alcohol all the time. I was full of anxiety. I was full of depressive thoughts. When I was so, when I get really manic, or I call it magnetic now, my whole body tingles. Like it's like I'm electric. I probably am. Yeah, I don't know if we put the right <laughs> instruments to read me. The top of my head gets really hot and tingly. My face is tingling. My whole nervous system is just like, ah, like ready to work and to build and to create. And it just feels like absolutely on fire and which I love the pleasure of that now I've learned to like through dance and through localization and through movement and walking and exercise I can transmute that into really healthy positive energy rather than being like I'm on edge this is too much I think it comes from we don't have a lot of outlets in life where we can put our creative energy in unless like you make a lot of art and things like that but I think we, we all have this strong desire to be included and to participate in the world. And I just don't see blatantly a lot of opportunities to do that other than work and your job. But that's not a job that you're designing in accordance to like your genius. So it can be really frustrating when there's no play. You just want to participate and improve the world and help people and serve the planet. But you don't have outlets to do that. So part of my mission, I think, is creating outlets like that for people. And I have a few business ideas around that. But that's a whole other topic. So after the first month, it became a little bit easier, I would say. But now I really beyond like my body kind of craving it I really got to look at all the ways that like my rhythm lifestyle thoughts created the desire to drink obviously there's a lot of social anxiety that happens when you're out and you don't have a drink in your hand so my solution to that was I always have a drink in my hand sparkling water and lemon juice or lime juice like I just get so hydrated <laughs> when I go out and everyone's partying and drinking and getting dehydrated and I wake up the next day I can stay up all night and I can wake up the next day just feeling so great because I'm so hydrated and I dance so it, to me it's like a workout class now when I go out finding the right ways to kind of diffuse the tension with people because people want other people to participate in the quote unquote vices. I'm not necessarily saying that like drinking is a vice. I don't think all types of drinking are vices, but I think a lot of people are pretty cognizant that they don't have healthy alcohol relationships. So they kind of need you to drink with them in order for them to justify their behavior. And this is not just true for alcohol, this is true for pretty much everything in life, is if we're not self-validating ourselves and in love with ourselves and accepting ourselves, then we look around us to others who are acting the same to validate ourselves instead. And so for a lot of my friends, when I was no longer validating them and their alcohol behavior, like if they would come and want to do a shot with me and I said, hey, no, thank you though, I appreciate that. Like I have a drink already. 
Like I wouldn't even bring up the fact that I wasn't drinking to a lot of people. Um, I kept it pretty quiet and I just kind of faked it for a while because I wasn't ready to have that conversation with people about the why. Like there's so much that goes into it and there's like quite a lot of judgment that happens when you do it. But the interesting thing that I've noticed is it's not judgment of me. Like my friends aren't judging me. They're judging themselves through my eyes. And so they either think that I'm judging them for drinking, which obviously I'm not. Like this is my own personal decision and I want people to have fun and use the tools at their disposal to live their best life possible. They start to reflect on why they drink and then that causes some conflict. And I've noticed it in a few of my friends and you really get to see who your friends are, who are your like real friends who love you for you and the friends who love you for the way that you justify them and their lifestyles. So we have, like, you have alcohol friends where when alcohol does, doesn't exist, you don't have the same level of relatability of interest in each other and hobbies and things like that. So I lost a few friends. I'm really lucky that I've cultivated such an incredible friend group that are not like hardcore partiers. Like we like to go out and dance and have fun but we're not like sitting around binge drinking and playing drinking games and things like that. Like that's just not part of my vibration, I guess, anymore. So I can see how that would be even more difficult, especially when all of your friends are your alcohol friends. I'm really lucky to have a lot of friends around the world now who are all from different walks of life, from different lifestyles, and I have a lot of friends that don't drink too. And so <laughs> when you grow up in life, the world tells you that drugs are bad, don't touch them, you're gonna get addicted, they show you the crystal meth photos, they show you all of these things and they're like, this is the worst thing that you can do, don't try it, stay away, abstain, say no to drugs, right? And I saw this graph of this study that was done on the effects of different drugs, harm to others and harm to users. This chart changed my life. I spent so much time looking at this graph. This was before I, I stopped drinking. It just blew my mind because in all media and in all of my education and all of the people that I look up to are all drinkers. They all drink alcohol. And looking at this graph, alcohol on both harm to others and harm to users, it sits at the top. I think heroin and crack cocaine and methamphetamine are more harmful to the user itself. It's harmful on your, more harmful on your body. But when it comes to the harm to others and harm to users, alcohol is number one. Yet this is the thing after sugar that is sold to us the most through society. Until I was outside of it, looking in, I couldn't really comprehend it in the same way. At the same time, all the hard, the drugs that they told us to watch out for, like LSD and mushrooms and ecstasy, are like at the bottom of this list in terms of harm to others and harm to, potential harm to self. And when I saw this, I was like, I was like, I've been duped. I've been duped, what the heck? That's a whole other topic is my psychedelic use. And my, I'm a huge, huge, huge advocate for using psychedelics for treatment resistant depression, for PTSD. Like I accredit a lot of the realizations and integrations that I've had in my life to things like ecstasy or LSD or mushrooms, but that's a whole other topic. And if you guys are interested to talk about that more, I would love to do videos on that. And DMT. DMT is not even on that list. So DMT is like way below everything. Anyways, here we are. So I see this graph. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm living in a simulation. What the heck is going on? This cannot be real. And I did more study on it and I did more thinking on it and more observing on it. And then, yeah, it totally is. Like when I walk, when I'm in a bar, and I'm sober and I'm looking around and I'm seeing all the unnecessary conflict between people, between couples, between people and themselves. Like a lot of people will end their life while they're heavily intoxicated. Like it's just this loss of inhibition. I believe like you're letting in energy that isn't you, like that is other spirits. Like I have so many stories where I've been heavily intoxicated and I've seen videos of my behavior or briefly remember my behavior and it's just so out of character 
And so I don't think it's a repressed thing. Like it's just absolutely another darker, angrier energy that comes through. And I went to go see the doctor and she's like, you're, you're low in folic acid. Um, do you drink? And I was like, yeah, I drink like pretty regularly. She's like, how much? I'm like, you know, a couple of drinks every like meal. <laughs> and she was like, okay, you need to cut that back to down to two drinks. And I was like, two drinks. Okay. She's like, two drinks a week. <laughs> and I was like looking at her, I was like, two drinks every day of the weekend. Like I was just so baffled by that. And then I've done more research and it's like, no amount of alcohol is good for you. Tools that I use that I wish I knew before I stopped drinking. Okay. Number one, always make sure you have a drink in your hand when you're out of the club. I usually just get water, a lime or lemon in it, or sometimes I'll get like a splash of cranberry. Um, so it's colored because when people see others with an empty hand, they're going to want to fill it for you. So having something in your hand removes their desire to buy you a drink. And if they want to buy you a drink, let them buy you a drink, but just say you're switching to water now. Like you don't have to tell people that you're not drinking if you're not comfortable yet to tell them or just tell them that, yeah, you'd love like a sparkling water and lemon. <laughs> People's faces when I say that, they're like, with tequila? I'm like, no, no, just sparkling water. And the bartenders too, like look at me and they're like, what are you doing here? But I'm like, I'm just having fun and dancing. Like, give me my water. And it's usually free. So honestly, I go out to the club and a lot of times I don't pay to get in and I don't pay for drinks. And so it's just a totally fun and free dance experience. Sometimes I get really overwhelmed and my social anxiety comes out when I am at the the club or the dance floor or the bar or the social setting where people are drinking, it feels a little bit overwhelming. I'm like, what am I doing here? I'm so awkward. I'm so aware. Everyone's unaware. La la la. And I remind myself one, usually the people around me are drinking. They are already inhibited. Two, I take the three deep breaths. So just into my belly. Belly breathing is like one of the best ways to relax yourself. A lot of us hold our stomachs tight and it actually doesn't allow your nervous system to relax the same amount. So just doing three deep breaths and just being present and letting my just whole system relax really helps me to kind of get into that chill state when I feel really uncomfortable. Oh, I like that I added the $20 million goal thing too, because when people ask me why I'm not drinking, I just say it was affecting my work and my business potential. And I'll start drinking again when I reach my financial goal of $20 million. And then immediately people are like, oh, well, I can't argue with that. But I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, well, we gotta, we gotta help you make $20 million now. I'm like, yeah. And so it just leads into this like, kind of like fun, silly, startling conversation. Um, so that was one of the tools that I used to make it a little bit easier and just give myself, you know, an end date. Other tools that I use when I was initially quitting, I had such a hard time. Uh, like at home and I wanted something to sip on. So I like to make elixirs now. I get lots of different fruit juices and soda water and tonics. Uh, lots, there's so many different things that you can mix together to make delicious drinks. My favorite one actually is like a San Pellegrino with apple cider vinegar because apple cider vinegar makes you feel like there's alcohol in it because it's got that like <laughs> taste to it. And then you've got the bubbles. And I would just sip that uh, whenever I felt like I wanted a drink and that helped a lot too. Also, you can get alcohol-free beer, although now that I'm gluten-free, I can't. So I need alcohol-free, gluten-free beer. And then at that point, I'm like, <laughs> what am I trying to do here? Uh, so that really helped too. What I realized was when I was using alcohol as a tool for my social anxiety, I eventually, probably through drinking too, and through self-transformation, I learned to be social regardless of alcohol and to be comfortable in myself and comfortable in, more comfortable in social situations. And I was still using the tool without realizing that I had created my own tools. And so when I stopped drinking, I really saw that, oh wow, like I have these skills. Like when I first started drinking, I didn't, but now I do. And so I don't need alcohol anymore to feel free and uninhibited in these situations. I mean, I could talk on end about just the terribleness of the media when it comes to alcohol and how in every scene of Peaky Blinders, someone has a whiskey. In every scene of The Good Wife, she's drinking wine. And 
anytime you have people in shows and movies, they'll be like, oh man, you just broke up, let's go for a drink. Oh man, you got a promotion, let's go for a drink. Oh man, you do this, let's go for a drink. It just feels a little bit too intentional when I'm on the outside of it. And just the amount of culture that revolves around drinking, like the bar scene and the club scene and all these different things, like I just look at so differently. And real quick, as I'm reviewing this video, I just saw that Tommy Shelby in Peaky Blinders in the new season quit drinking. And there's a few different moments in it. Uh, I can probably include screenshots where he stops drinking. And this, I don't know what about it. I just thought it was so funny that I mentioned it in this video and then the new episode just came out and he's quit drinking. So like, thank you so much. Whoever produces the show, thank you. Cause he can be super powerful and savage without needing alcohol. Really? has also got me to look for other things that happen that aren't the drug and, and bar scene. And it really inspired me to start some things that are my own and some conscious groups and communities where like my dream is to get like a sisterhood together and have Luke and some of the guy friends I have get a brotherhood together and do activities and things that we're just craving as women and as men and then come together and have like really fun, high vibe festivals and events, go on little journeys and ceremonies together like that's I think what the society is really missing especially with the loss of religion I'm just craving that so I want to create more events and like lots of nature hiking and retreat centers and stuff like that so I'm really interested and excited about that aspect of of the world and I've spent a lot of time the last few years studying it and experiencing it myself so that's all I can think of now that's why I quit drinking those are the tools that I used to continue not drinking and my hope for humanity. You know, I want to build and create closer knit communities and neighborhoods and groups of people who feel free to be themselves and be accepted and loved and, and cherished and appreciated because that's why, that's why we live. That's why we live. Yeah, I think there's a movement in society now where it was this isolation and now we're coming back together and how do we want to come back together? Do we want to go back to the bars together or are there other activities and fun, conscious, intentional things that we can do together instead? So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching my video. If you stay to the end, you're a real one. Let me know your experience with alcohol down in the comments. I love talking to people about this topic. Like I'm not necessarily for or against it. Just sending you so much love and reminding you that life is really challenging. And so never feel guilty or feel bad for the way that you medicate or take care of yourself in order to feel safe and aligned and secure. And I want you to send yourself love today too. I think that's the biggest thing we can do in life. And I hope you guys have an amazing, amazing day. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more content. And if you have more topics that you'd like to see me chat about too, I love getting feedback from you guys and making videos. So let me know in the comments down below what you would like to see me chat about or show you or things like that. Love you. Bye.